Andy Otto, thank you very much for joining us uh, here at the Cinema Museum. Thank Isn't you for having me. Uh, thank you. And you're going to share your favourite DVDs with us, which we're very, very excited yeah, about. Yeah, you've made this very difficult because I, I was only allowed to choose three. Yeah. So the Back to the Future box set, that's been left behind. Oh, sorry to hear that. You, 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 you're someone that has quite a big DVD collection? Um, it's, not, it's not that big, but I, because I tend to only buy DVDs that I know that I'm going to watch over and over and over oh. again. I don't buy DVDs. Oh, that was good. like Tinker Tailor Soldier's Buy. I yeah. won't be getting the DVD, even though it's a great film because right. it's not something that I'm going to sit through yeah, again. That's it. I like that. So basically your DVD collection is fundamentally what a, a DVD collection should be which is films that you adore. Yes, definitely. Perfect. definitely. So um, this one you must love and I, I too love Ghostbusters. A fantastic choice. We are from the same, <laughs> this clearly from the same generation loving this film. I love, do you know what I love about Ghostbusters, right? Is the, the, the graphics and the, the effects, yeah, if you yeah. want to call them that, are terrible <laughs> compared to what we can do yeah. now. But I believe them more. Yeah. The other thing that I really adore about it is the cast. Yeah. I think um, this is probably one of the finest like comedy, yeah. like um, ensemble performances. Um, uh, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, um, Sigourney Weaver, all, and, and Rick Moranis. As well, yeah. all brilliant in the roles that they had. Absolutely. And did you, like me, I mean, I've, I've got to admit to this, when I first saw it at eight or nine, as well as finding it hilarious, brilliant, catchy, fun, I also found it quite scary. Uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> I've gone out on a limb there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also this really funny bit where, like, because obviously there's extras who take their roles a bit too far. So there's a bit where they're in the jail and they've laid out the floor plans for this building and they're trying to work out what's going on. And, and Egon is explaining to everybody that, you know, there was this weird cult thing. And there's, a, there's an extra in the back just going... <laughs> really playing up his part. And it's almost like they want to cut around him, but every shot is... <laughs> you know, he's there going, I will play the part. <laughs> Exactly. I, I, I am prisoner yeah. number three. <laughs> See how I nod. Yeah, I told you I would make it. And 15 years of acting training, I will do it. I have learned yeah. nodding. I can nod. Your girlfriend lives in the corner penthouse of Spook Central. She's not my girlfriend. I find her interesting because she's a client and because she sleeps above her covers four feet above her covers. She barks, she drools, she claws. It's not the girl, Peter, it's the building. Something terrible is about to enter our world and this building is obviously the door. Ghostbusters, one of Andy show's favorite DVDs and a very wise choice. Equally wise, another, another film that I too would call a masterpiece, The Matrix, um, a film obviously severely let down by its sequels, but we're not going <gasps> to on that. James! Have I, have I, have I, have I? I, I do apologise if I said something the wrong. They're not sequels. They, they don't even... This even is a trilogy, my friend. Oh, a oh. trilogy. I would, I would actually say that the sequels don't even exist. This is a one-off oh, film. Oh, my days. OK, here's the thing. I would, have, I would have put a box set. I would have put the box set in, really? but I thought I might have been, like, stretching the rules on this. <laughs> but for me, The Matrix... Because I know that the Wachowski brothers conceived this as a trilogy. It yeah. wasn't, oh, let's make The Matrix. Hmm, we're bored. We need something to do, dude. And then they made the other two. They conceived a whole story. And I know some people are really completely on board with the you know the narrative of the second like you yeah. uh, the narrative <laughs> of the, the the other two films but i really get them i just well, i don't know maybe it's just me nice. but i really dig what they were trying to say that's not uh, that's nice to hear. i mean for me i think what was interesting about the, the original was was that it's it's very unpredictable and it's and it's also i mean it sounds ridiculous to say it but it's it, it, you buy into it, mm. it it's I'm, I'm, I'm loath to use the word believable, mm. but it really is believable. You do buy into it. And to me, the, the sequels just got, the, not the sequels, the, the other two parts of the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on board. I'm, you, on board. Yeah. I'm on board. You saw now. me go then. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what? Yeah, the? yeah, oh, what? Okay. If you say sequel <laughs> one more time, I will kill you. Um, um, I mean, and, and the whole blue pill thing, which is so brilliant, you know, the, the, the choice thing of the first one. But yeah, for me, the, the sequels are just a bit too fantastical. The, the other trilogy parts were fantastical. But, but, it's but, like you're trying to make me crazy I, right I know, now. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, would you, uh, have you, have you sat and watched um, all three parts of the trilogy in one go? Not in one go. It cannot be done. That's a day's work. Right. But um, I do. I have watched The Matrix and the other two. Um, my least favourite one is the middle one. I have to say, okay. of three. But I really like. Uh, I really like the the conclusion of it. Um, I think. 
see the thing about the matrix for me is that i think there is a, an element of of truth in it as an analogy yeah. like into this is all a bit serious now but like I, I, it's an analogy for me of like the sort of ego consciousness that we're in yeah. and that it's not really real but we've we've sort of become separated from what maybe spiritual people like Deepak Chopra and people like that would say is our true selves yeah. and that's the the self that neo becomes when he sort of gets flushed down the toilet yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. um, but yeah, so that's what I really liked about the Matrix, the Matrix, and and the other films is th is that premise. That's yeah. what I really got. Your next choice, a more well, a more serious film, but very very thoughtful. Contact with Jodie Foster. Um, do tell me, it, it's an interesting choice. Well, see, the thing is, I don't know how 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 much attention people have paid to this film mm. over the years. I only recently discovered it's based on a true story. So it's basically about uh, a, a woman a scientist, I guess, uh, who's studying sort of um, looking for life on other planets or, yeah. you know, other intelligent life forms. And uh, they receive this signal, this pulsating signal, and they break it down and realise it consists of prime numbers. Now, I think the truth of it is they never really discovered what the source of it was, yeah. that whether it was a possibility that it was intelligent life. But this extrapolates the story out to, yeah. not only is it intelligent life out there, but they're actually sending us schematic diagrams to how to build a machine to come and visit them. Right. So that, that's, that's the story. Essentially an invitation. It's a, it's yeah, 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 it is the most, ex, most complicated moon pig card ever, <laughs> basically. Without any proper RSVP <laughs> details. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just got to turn up. Sorry, I should have bought wine. <laughs> um, but I, for, I mean, when I went to see this film, the really funny thing about it is it's really cheesy. There's right. really cheesy moments in it where, where I could hear the rest of the audience laughing. But I was right. like, no, 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 this is really good. Yeah. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I do have this sort of fascination with the what if. Yeah. You know, what if um, th this actually happened and the possibility of, because, you know, I, without spoiling, well, this is a spoiler alert, but she does, they build the contraption and yeah. she does uh, travel um, to, um, you know, to visit the, the life form that sent, sent yeah. the, the plans or whatever in the first place. And it just, for me, that's fascinating, just yeah. that very idea, because, um, you know, there's a lovely line in it where her dad says to her, that, that, like speculating on whether there are other intelligent life forms out there and saying that, you know, if, if there is nothing out there, then that's an awful waste of space. That's beautiful. Andy also, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your DVD collection with us. You are currently on tour, of course, yes, with I'm. all the single ladies, mm -hmm. one of um, the Edinburgh Festival's most well-reviewed shows. And I believe tour dates are on your website, andyosho.co.uk.